This is a Digital Music Trends coverage of Medem 2014, an interview with Melinda Lee, General Manager at Getty Images Music. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the leading provider of digital delivery services to the independent community on ci-info.com. So hi Melinda, and uh, it's great to have you here. How's it going? Oh, uh, it's going really great. It's great to actually meet you in person. Yeah, absolutely. So we're having a good Medem. I guess it's like the third day in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, I still have a lot of energy, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> That's surprising. I'm seeing a lot of like uh, uh, droopy faces today. So yeah, I know you see a lot of people wearing glasses indoors. It's crazy. <laughs> so you know, um, it's really good that we're catching up because uh, I, I, I couldn't believe that the last interview I did with uh, Getty was uh, with uh, Jonathan Klein uh, three years ago. So it's it's just a really long, really long time ago, and you just launched uh, back then. You just launched your music strategy essentially. So we have a lot to to catch up on on what, what you've been up to. So first of all, uh, Getty Images Music. You know, most people still associate Getty Images with the, the images side. Uh, how has the music department grown over the last couple of years? I mean, that that's a really good point. Um, with having Getty Images and images in your branding, right. automatically people are going to think images. But, I mean, Getty is a multimedia, you know, um, licensing company. So they have imagery, they have video, and they have music. Um, and we've really grown as such. Um, by having all three types of content, it really works for content creators, especially the newer ones that are emerging, you know, all the all the hobbyists or the digital you know um, digital content producers they're um, coming on board and you know they're they're buying imagery then right there there's video and then with the music I mean it's complicated licensing music especially if maybe you're from the print world or you know where you're not actually you know um, a savvy music buyer so we've actually seen a lot of growth in our music product by just doing something really simple which is simplifying music licensing yeah. for us um, so it's kind of grown with the vision that that Jonathan was alluding to back you know three years ago with you yeah, um, sure. so it's really exciting to see that it doesn't happen overnight but it does happen gradually and um, you know we're looking at all the different trends we're looking at how fragmented the music space is um, looking at all the different business models that are emerging and really just kind of staying you know um, into it like in line with all the different types of models that are popping up and how people want to produce and create content and that's the most important thing for us. Yeah, because essentially, you know, the, the key thing about uh, uh, the, the Getty uh, content is that if somebody needs something, you know, they need to be able to find it fairly quick. So that's sort of the core of being, being able to have an engine that allows that, right? Yeah, I mean, we're finding that more and more people, especially the producers these days, they're producing on the fly, right? right? So, you know, like with TV and more traditional producers, like they have, you know, seasons that they're producing for so they can prepare a little bit more. And some really um, take their time with music. But we're finding that many times, you know, you'll have producers who are trying to get the visuals, trying to get the story in place. They're, they're, they're editing very quickly because it's so much easier now because technology is advanced, you know, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, you know, I have to I have to get the right music for this mood. And if it's not something that you're necessarily featuring in the scene and it's something that's going to enhance the scene, but not necessarily the, the star, right, so to speak, then you find that, you know, people have very, very short, like, you know, quick turnaround times. And they got to get that music really quickly and it has to match that scene. And so so, you know, we, we really fall into that sweet spot for sure because all of our content is pre-cleared. Um, and like I said, you know, for us, it's about making it very simple. So there isn't this back and forth, back and forth approval process, you know, negotiation. I mean, we have a really great pricing team that takes a look at the market and they price, you know, our content so that it's competitive, you know, so that, you know, the, the contributors and our partners are still getting the value for their licenses, but also something that is, you know, affordable for different types of content creators. And, and that's the key. And maintaining that balance is really important to us. Yeah. Uh, looking at sourcing the music, so uh, do you, you work with uh, composers, you work with artists, uh, do you also work with catalogs? So how do you go about uh, uh, getting people on board with the, with the Get the Images music model? Yeah, so we, um, we absolutely work with contributors and with artists. Um, depending on the offering, certain types of, um, you know, partners work better than others, but we absolutely work with with um, you know other music libraries as well so many of our partners are also competitive in this space but we really find that we don't really bump into each other so much because Getty's offering is 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 so differentiated from other music libraries in that 
we do have the imagery, we do have the video, you know, and then with the music and those types of, you know, customers who are buying that type of content, when they're coming for, for the music piece, they're not necessarily the ones that are in the crowded space that all the music libraries are in. Yeah. And uh, from a composer's point of view, I know that uh, composers sometimes have, uh, have questions when it comes to uh, joining a service like Getty. They, they ask, uh, you know, uh, is it an exclusive license? Can I still be part of a PRO as part of, uh, you know, if I have my catalog with Getty? So uh, can you answer some of those questions? Oh, totally. Um, okay, so we're pretty open, all right? So, I mean, our, our thing is, if we always go back to what our philosophy is, which is, all right, we really just want to make music licensing simple for our customers, for the content creators, so that they can keep on creating. We, um, you know, will work with contributors and with artists, and we will essentially get the rights to be able to license it out for content creators. But that doesn't mean that we own anything, right? We are just really just saying, here's our customer base. We have a lot of people come to our site who are coming specifically to license stuff. We have a global sales force. You know, um, we already have the customers, and what we want to be able to do is just make it easy to be able to distribute, you know, this music into what these projects are but we're not we're not you know looking to buy music or the own all the rights we just want to be able to help in the licensing process of it um, so that's one piece we do have some deals where they're exclusive but that's a different type of an offering you know and you'll see that some models out there and want exclusivity like for instance YouTube because of the content ID you know the way that they pay out on those rev shares they need to have an exclusive you know um, an exclusive relationship so that they know who to pay out after content ID identifies it yeah. so for those types of offerings because we are also, you know, in that space, we will, you know, ask for it because that's what that model, you know, is asking for. Yeah. But for us, I mean, no, you, you can you can sign up and it's not exclusive. If you want to be exclusive, we could talk about that. Um, you know, we're just really open and we just want to make sure that we're flexible and nimble and, you know, grow with where the different music models are growing. Yeah. And uh, yesterday I was on a panel where we were talking about uh, the revenues that can derive from uh, video production and that's uh, I guess that's an important uh, area to look out uh, uh for, uh, for you guys as well indirectly because of course uh, uh, if uh, the video producers that are creating that uh, sort of type of multimedia content for which you would need uh, uh, stock uh, images or footage or music from Getty if they're not making any money off, off, uh, off of their content then it becomes hard for them to make it work economically so uh, are you seeing more and more uh, video makers that are, are trying to make uh, uh, the economics of video work online that license music through Getty? Yeah Definitely. Um, we're finding that even the more traditional producers um, or the content creators that, you know, produce for, you know, TV and more traditional outlets, there's always an online strategy to put it online and, you know, at, so either it'll be on a, it's some sort of a video platform and usually um, the way that those deals are, it's not like a guarantee or anything, it's usually some sort of a rev share, you know, based off of the ads that are served against that video. Um, so that's on the traditional side, we're seeing a lot of that. But then, you know, we, um, we have a lot of corporate clients, you know, and um, they'll make a corporate video and they're they're good. They have their own styles for the corporate videos. I mean, it's not sexy or anything like that, but you know, it, it, it so it might be an internal video, but then they will put it on an, on some sort of a video platform as well or in, you know, the the social media um, where there's a shared link yes. and you know, they, they can go ahead and monetize against that. So we find that there's a lot of licenses that are, that are for us, specifically growing in the online space and also in corporate. Yeah. So I, I would say that, that that's a really, you know, um, great area for, for Getty because we're already online. So people are, you know, producing and they're getting it off of our platform. And we also have an API where, you know, people can like, you know, port it in, so to speak. Um, and so it helps with the production process, but everything is online yeah. if you think about it, you know, meaning online versus offline, not necessarily, you know, online on the <laughs> internet. But then from yeah. there, it's only two clicks away before you can just upload it where it actually is online, you know, where it actually is in social media. Um, and for us, that's a very easy workflow. Um, so on the music side, you know, we're seeing that we're seeing a lot of online licenses growing, scaling, um, and, and also a lot in the corporate space. Yeah. 
you were talking about uh, we were talking last night about the international expansion of, of Getty so that's on the music front that's uh, that's really important because it gives you access to a wider breadth of, uh, of composers different types of music for different uh, areas of the world and so how important is that and how are you looking to uh, segment uh, the music offering you have in there to be able to cater for different international uh, tastes and, and needs yeah you know it's it's actually really interesting we um, we have a lot of emerging territories right so we're seeing more and more licenses coming out of Singapore and Japan and Korea and Turkey and um, uh, and that's really exciting for us we start to get to know the workflow for these different territories as well and some of them they want their content like from drives rather than pulling it, you know, offline. You know, um, so it's it's interesting to be able to work with these emerging territories and to help them grow um, as they use music in their own projects. But what's really cool about being in those territories? Remember, I was saying before we don't really run in to our competitors too too much, you know, um, because. We are we're different because we're we're a multimedia you know licensing company, um, and what's cool about that is we find that many of our you know competitors and par- want to be partners because we are in those spaces you know like and this is where we don't run into somebody if you've got like you know an ad agency in Turkey who's using you know a track and um, you know they they may license it for you know a certain fee that may not be as much as you would get in the US but it's just added you know revenue for sure and it's not cannibalizing Um, so you know in two ways so we we get you know contributors and partners who definitely want to be in that space and that's why that they that's why they want to work with us and then we'll work with the content creators who you know we're starting to learn what it is that they want and what they need so it's a really nice circle of you know people giving us content and us making sure that we know what the market wants what it needs and to fill any gaps so it, it is nice to be in that space and our goal is to you know grow it is many regions and territories as possible because we really do want to have a broad broad offering for all types of content creators you know whether you're you're a, a newer market you know or, or one that's well established and mature sure, sure. and uh, uh, do you see uh, you know of, uh, of course you have a lot of individual contributors uh, to the to, to, to the service do you also see uh, starting to see some label interest uh, in in uh, licensing music to, to getting yeah I think so I mean if you actually look at a lot of the labels they all have uh, what they like to call one stop yeah one stop um, it's very similar to, to what it is that we do so we're having some really great discussions um, with labels I mean we, we've had um, a partnership with Sony ATV um, for quite some time now uh, and it really just comes down to again simplicity sure in the license but also simplicity in in the organizations that we're working with and how easy it is for for them to be able to you know work with a distributor or with a partner like us but um, I mean we've been having really good conversations and um, it you know it, to, to be in that space would be really exciting I think for for both you know the label and for Getty. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, publishing is a big thing here at Medium and uh, uh, is, is that a complete nightmare when it comes to uh, you know songwriters and contributors that have a publishing deal and, and you know have to look at all that side as well? I mean it it, not really, <laughs> because for us, um, you know, we, we really just simply ask for all the rights to be in, in one place so yeah. that we can make that license to the content creator really easy. Yeah. Um, if it gets complicated for the publisher because all the rights are, you know, all over the place, then um, if there's no consensus, then it's not something that we can offer, right? It, it becomes more of a nightmare, I think, when everybody has their own, you know, share and the rights are completely fragmented and then you have one buyer who needs to actually get approval from everyone and no one can really agree as to what the fee is yeah. and everyone's MFF, you know, MFNing yeah, all over the place yeah, sure. and then it's taking a while because you can't find one person because, you know, they're on vacation and um, so that's where it gets really complicated and we're not really in that space. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say, opposite. yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, and for us, I, I wouldn't say that it's not that we won't go there, but we would only go into that space if there was already consensus from all the rights holders that we would license it out and that, you know, 
if it's if it's not pre-approved, then the approval process needs to be a quick turnaround. It has to feel like it's fast and and easy, and and also be able to give confidence to the people who want to license it because they're they're doing the right thing. You know, they're not taking it. Um, so for the people who want to license it, for them to feel confident that okay, you know, there isn't going to be anything else that's going to pop up. Because, like, of course, that, that's where you're, that's a business you're in. You're, you know, you're in a scale business. Uh, and, uh, you know, if somebody wants a track by a specific artist, then there's always sync agencies that do that. And they're much smaller and, and, and you know, they work in that space, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and I mean, that that's a really huge market, you know, to actually, like, you know, clearances and yeah, everything. Sure. And we have that as well. Um, but what we want to do is be able to, you know, sort of create the, the store or the platform where... Maybe if you don't even know what you're looking for, you might be able to find it yeah. just by coming online and, and doing a search. Yeah. Finally, let's, let's finish by talking about the technology uh, side of things. So how has that evolved? I know there's a, there's a few companies out there that are doing interesting things around uh, mood searches and uh, tagging and uh, you know, allowing people to overlay their videos or the music onto, you know, as a preview and stuff like that. So, so w- w- where are you right now in, on the technology front? Um, well, you know, Getty has always been, you know, um, in, in, in the front with respect to licensing and technology. And once again, you know, the aspect of getting all the rights in one place so that you can actually deliver the asset, you know, to the customer. Um, I think that there's a lot of exciting things that are popping up on the technology side, mainly by a lot of just startups who are just, you know, just, you know, they're, they're just developing, developing, developing. And it's usually in the area of delivery. Yeah. Right, so it's kind of like okay, um, and it's connecting the people who are looking and searching, and looking at how they're searching, and then being able to give it to them. Yeah. Um, I think that there's there's still a lot of there's still a lot of work to do w- within the industry as well, because I um, I, I still find that even though we might be in this space of being able to, you know, create a button where somebody, you know, hears what they what, what they want to license and they click on it and they say, all right, I want to license it. And they know they want to license it, right? I think that there's still a little bit of education that is, needs to be done with the person who's clicking on the button, knowing what well, what does it mean to license? Oh, that might mean a fee or it might mean <laughs> something, right? And then the person who's actually making it available for them to actually have all the rights to be able to license to the person who's asking to license it. Um, There's still a little bit of education on both sides that that we're finding. But, you know, on on the side of Getty and, and our customers, I mean, for the most part, they, they're coming to us because they want to license, so they have a little bit of a firmer understanding of what that would entail. You know, and then, and then as far as the delivery is concerned, you know, they know that they can then get it. So, I mean, I, that's working pretty well. Um, on the metadata side of things, we're, you know, always trying to keep up with the different ways that people describe music. And now that there's, you know, this whole new, um, I, I would say, um, segment of newer content creators or video producers they're not you know they're not necessarily as savvy as say you know the the music supervisors or the producers who have been producing for TV for many many years uh, they they refer to music in different ways you know and um, you know whereas like a music supervisor they have their own lingo you know where they might say oh I need something that sounds a little bit more green you know like I what does that mean? But to them, it really does mean something, and it's a special vernacular for that segment who probably will spend a certain amount. And then you have other people, you know, who are just trying to describe music, you know, by mood or maybe um, as a sound alike, you know. And I think it's really important for us to watch these markets and to understand, you know, where the where the different markets begin and end, what the value is, and then how they're describing the music. So metadata is more important than ever. What I, I still have yet to see is a standardization of the metadata, specifically for music sync. And that's something that, that you know, it, it's, you know, for us, we care very much about that. Well, Mal, it was a real pleasure uh, talking to you. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, it's uh, uh, gettyimages.com and you're going to be able to find all the links uh, to the to the music side of things uh, from there if you're looking into it, uh, either as a creator or, or as, a, as a video producer, of course. And uh, thanks so much for your time. Oh, thank you very much.